Hi folks and I hope you're all doing okay. I had a request from one of my subscribers asking if I could show him how I did the backing track to Enjoy the Silence by Depeche Mode uh, which I uploaded probably about a year ago now and uh, what I thought I'd do is something slightly different because it's quite a long track and there's a lot uh, going on in there I thought I'd break it up into separate videos so this first video uh, for it is just going to concentrate on the introduction that you can hear playing in the background now. So I'm going to show you in this video just simply how to do the introduction part and then we'll do some follow up videos uh, with the rest of the song. Okay, so that's that's what I'm going to show you how to play on the JDXI today, and uh, just a few of the basics. The um, tempo is set to 60 beats per minute, and I've got the pattern length. Sorry, I've got the scale setting set to one over 32. So I'm trying to make the pattern as long as possible, and also we have got all four bars or all four measures uh, set uh, in operation for it. But ha however, we start off with just two bars, um, sorry, which we start off with just the, the one measure setting, which some people call it a bar, some people call it a measure, but in, in effect, you're going to get 32 notes on the sequencer to play around with. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is set the sequencer back to uh, the one measure setting. So go into Menu, Pattern Length, Enter, and set that down to one measure. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete all the tracks, and I'm going to show you how to build this up from scratch. So we go into Shift, Erase, and Erase All. Enter. So we've got nothing now. Okay. So the first thing we're, I'm going to show you is the drum pattern. Um, and it's not much of a drum pattern. It's just simply one uh, symbol um, repeating. <laughs> uh, the drum kit that I'm using is the 707 and 727 kit one. And the symbol is the PHH or partial hi-hat and that appears on positions 5 and 13 of the first measure and 5 and 13 of the second measure. So we can just simply turn the volume up so we can hear it. There we go. So 5 and 13 of measure 1. Hold the shift button down, get to the next measure and then we want 5 and 13 of measure 2. So I think what I need to do first of all is just go into the menu and set the scale setting. So I think by doing that erase, I've erased the scale setting. Yes, I have. So we need to go to 1 over 32. Press Enter. OK, so now we'll just do that again. So just erase that to start with. So um, back to... Back to the beginning, um, symbol, partial hi-hat on 5 and 13 in the first measure and on 5 and 13 in the second measure. So it uh, <laughs> quite boringly sounds like this. Probably a little bit too loud as well, so we can just turn the level down a touch there. Right, so that's that's that one. Now the next sequence that I'm going to show you is the analog synthesizer. And the analog synthesizer, we're using uh, the voice called Saw Bass One. But what I'm doing, I'm actually shifting it up three octaves. So the on its standard setting, Saw Bass One is quite quite low but I want it high 
um, for this song. So shifting it up three octaves and I'm going to play the sequence and this top part of the keyboard here. So it's going to sound something like this. So the notes that I'm playing is the very top C, then down one octave to this C, then I'm going to the F, F flat, back to the C again, then to the G, back to the C, back to the E flat and then back to the C again. So the way this is programmed in, I go back to the first measure again. So it starts off with the C on position one, then it goes down one octave to that C, then up to the E flat, down to the C again. So just listen to the first bit. Can you hear it starting to build up? Then back to the G, back to the C, back to the E flat again, back to the C. So the first measure sounds like this. Then you've got to repeat that again on the second measure. So we press the shift button down, going to measure two, and just repeat that whole thing again. Again, we can reduce the, reduce, reduce the level a little bit. And that drum is still a little bit loud. There we go. And now the next voice I'm going to show you is Digital Synth 1. And the voice that I'm using for that, it's in the bank called Strings and Pads, and it's the D50 Stack 1 voice that I'm using. Sounds something like this. Okay, so we're going to play um, quite simple chords for this. So again, just go back to the first measure, and we're going to first of all hold down the chord starting Oh, by the way, we're actually shifting up one octave for this one. So on its normal setting, it's there, but up one octave. That's the, that's the voice that we want. So shift it up one octave. So the first chord that I want is a G, a C and an E flat. Now to, to record this, you could record it in real time if you wanted to or you can use the step recorder. Um, I would suggest using the step recorder to, uh, to begin with. So press the step recorder, press the chord, and then use the key hold to move it to the end of the first pattern. When it gets to the end of the first pattern and shifts to the second one with that light flashing, don't, don't key hold it anymore because we're going to change the chord now and the chord we're going to change it to is a G, a B flat, and an E flat. So hold, use the key hold again now to move it forward to the end of that measure. And then just press the step record to switch it off. And you should have the basis of the chords now. But what's also needed, we need some bass in there. So um, in, the, in the original version that I did, there is some bass in there. Now the bass uh, actually sounds good if you shift it back down to the normal octave position and hold down these two Cs here and these two E flats here. 
So the first measure will be this one, and then the second measure will be this one. So we need to be make sure we're on the first measure. In fact, probably it's easy to do this in, in real time record because you can play along with what you've already recorded. So you hit real time record, hit play, and when you're ready, so the start of the first, me first measure is going to be these two C's here, and the start of the second measure is going to be these two B flats here. job there and the last voice that we're going to do for this introduction is the little bit of lead that plays over the top of it and the voice that I'm using for that can be found in the FX other bank and it's called Sin Vox One. Again we're shifting it at one octave because it's normal position is there, we want it up one octave. And the what I'll do, I'll play along with it to start with, then I'll tell you what notes I'm playing. Starts on an E flat. live and there's mistakes going in there. <laughs> right, what you need to do before you record this, we need to now make this pattern from a one uh, measure to the four measure. So it, because that, that little bit of lead actually goes over the, all four measures. Um, so what we're going to do, go into the menu, go into um, pattern length, Find pattern length, there we are, pattern length, press enter, change it from measure one to measure four, press enter. It says with copying, now this is important, you must copy it. <laughs> so press enter, which is going to copy everything that you've done over all four measures. So the whole thing now is four measures long. All sounds the same to start with but once that lead bit goes over the top of it it starts to sound good and so it starts I did actually write all this down over here so I'll just read it out from my notes so it starts on an E flat up to an F down to a C back to the E flat G B flat back to the E flat back to the F, back to the C, back to the E flat, down to A flat, to B flat, down to G, and up to C, and finishing on a D. And don't worry, I'll write this down in the notes. <laughs> I don't expect you to remember it, but... Uh, Watch it a few times, you'll, you'll probably you'll get the gist of it, I think. So, I would suggest doing this in real time record. Uh, you could use a step recorder if you want, but it's quite fiddly to do with a step recorder. Um, practice it a few times, and then when you're ready, have a go at real time recording it. So, see if I can do it without making any mistakes. I'll let it run through one once, and then join it on the second one. starting on the E flat 
watch the counter over here when it gets to four, two, one, go. I don't believe it. <laughs> Did it without many mistakes. So that's it. Don't forget to save it when you've finished. And then what we'll do, we'll use that pattern. We'll copy that pattern over to the next memory slot in the next video. And we'll then use that to then build up the next sequence which is the sort of like the um, opening introduction so I hope you found that interesting if you like my stuff that I'm doing don't forget to uh, give it a like and subscribe if you if you want to see some more and um, much appreciated if you do and if you don't <laughs> well it 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 boosts me along it, it 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 encourages me to do more videos so the more subscribers I get the more videos I'll do so thanks a lot and I do appreciate uh, your feedback and comments as well. Take care and I wish you all the best and hopefully we'll see you again soon. Bye for now.